my first guest uh, all the way from, he's actually in Florida, uh, an, an old Second City buddy of ours who also played Principal Blackman in Strangers with Candy. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Greg Holloman. Greg, welcome to the Epic Talk Show. Well, there he is. Hey, oh. there he is. Hey. Good to see you, buddy. Like a Bert Max, what's up? <laughs> How you been? Uh, I, I've been I've been good. You know, I'm here in uh, Punta Gorda, Florida. That's like uh, I've been down here uh, five years. So I've been actually I've been on quarantine for five years. <laughs> five years. How is it in Florida with the, the stay at home rule and everyone hearing around the country that Florida's late to the game? Do you First feel all, like uh, Florida? Get my Negro light together. Hold on. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You look good. Um, Florida taking it seriously? Uh, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm quarantined. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm taking it seriously. You know, I got, I keep my mask. Got, you know, I got neighbors that make me masks. Except I had to have her make me a yellow mask. Oh, there you go. That so looks good. Because in a dark mask, let's face it, I'm just gonna like. It feels weird to slap on gloves and put on a mask and feel like I'm robbing a liquor store, you know? <laughs> so. Well, for you, I mean, it's great to see you. Like we were joking right before we went to you that, you know, I, it, well, at social distancing, we never see our friends, but at the same time, I haven't seen you in a couple of years. So yeah, <laughs> it feels like, um, so I, I want to ask about Strangers with Candy before we get to some other stuff. Yeah, I mean, the next so. show we were just talking about still continues to be so iconic and you i just watched it not too long ago and it still holds up and it's still one of the funniest shows do you see it that way do you see that uh why does a show like that continue to have such success 23 years after the fact i never i never watched the show i mean you know i have i have copies of it but i never look at it and it's so funny when it was out i used to watch it and i was just seeing how my performance was but then like, let's say seven years later, I watched it. I started watching everybody else's performances and I was cracking up, you know? So uh, I, 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 don't, I, I don't know why it's, it's a, it, it was just, I don't know why it's good. Yeah, and obviously uh, when you go back and watch it. I, think I, asked, I asked Colbert one time, cause I was surprised at the time. I was like, you know, like some of Amy's lines, some of all their lines, I'm like, how do you, <laughs> how do you do it, man? How do you know what to go for? And he was saying, like, regards to jokes, he says, it's like um, when you're writing a joke, it's like going for a, a light. He's like, you know if it's green, it's safe. He's like, you kind of go for it right between it's going from yellow to red. Then you got it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, so, it's, it's amazing that that show was on Comedy Central as well, which yeah. at the time, I mean, it's, it's a pretty racy show. But, yeah. uh, you, you know, I was talking to TJ before the show and we were kind of figuring out some of your backdrop background, TJ, just the idea of what Greg has done in his life beyond comedy in Chicago. Yeah. And we were going over your background and your backdrop, Greg. And I want to make that very clear. Um, but you, uh, you were a meter reader for some time. Yes. 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 For, for, I, was it gas, electric, water? What were you, for whom were you reading meters in Chicago? I was reading meters for Commonwealth Edison before I got fired after 12 years. <laughs> they fired you? What? How do you get fired yeah. from that? Uh, well, you know, I should have gotten fired. Well, no, you know, I should have got suspended. I shouldn't have been fired. Uh, I was working in a neighborhood, and uh, at the time, I went from a meter reader, and I was a meter man. I was installing electric meters. Ooh, nice. And uh, I'm working, like, in, in um, Humble Park, before Humble Park got as nice as it is now. But anyway, it was like... August and you're installing, you're on electricity, man. You just, it's like, like a lot of electricity. Anyway, these kids are pouring water down throughout the third floor, you know? <laughs> so I slap these meters in and I leave, you know? <laughs> and uh, well, I slapped them in on a dead fitting. I didn't know there was, the, you know, there's a test you're supposed to take, you know? And I was like, it, half the time it's running live, so. Uh, that's why I eventually got fired. And they tried to save my job. And this is, uh, so after a, a year, the union tried to save my job and they offered me a job as a nuclear fireman. So I'm like, what kind of fires am I gonna be putting out? <laughs> you know? 
Mm -hmm. Chernobyl, man, that's no good. Right? Yeah, I was like, man, it's not gonna work. Yeah. So uh, I could have got my gig back, but because um, sometimes you know you get your gig back and then you get a year of back pay, and it was so weird. Uh, they had they came to the they sent a guy to pick me up in their company car, and I got in. And it was filled with a whole bunch of electric meters in the back. And I had worked there all that time. And I never knew that those meters had a scent smell. Ooh. And once I got in that car, that smell hit my nose. And every bad memory about that <laughs> effing company oh, man. came to a man. I was like, you know, I'm going through the motions, but I'm never coming back to this MF. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know that smell, but you're right. Uh, Greg, I, I heard that while you were putting in meters, you got to know every single part of the city of Chicago? Uh, on the north side. The north on the north side. side. What's your favorite corner or favorite block in the entire city? I mean, the city. I mean, the north side, where you used to work. Uh, well, you work from, we went from North Avenue to Howard, okay? From the lake to O'Hare. So you had like 40 men work that whole, that whole section of the city. And so, like, let's say at the beginning of the month, you were at from uh, North Avenue to Armitage, from the lake to, and then the next day you went from uh, Armitage to what's on Fullerton. So uh, I used to hate like where Steppenwolf is now. Oh, on Halstead. Yeah. yeah. That Those was shows are atrocious. Like it does now. <laughs> it, That's, it that, block, it. that block has never looked good. It's always no. looked the same. It's a no, no, that area has changed. I mean, there was no, you know, uh, the Apple store and all that jazz there back in 1974. That's when you were doing it, 1974? That's when you were doing it? 74 to 87. That's what, what? I, I worked. <laughs> and uh, then I started taking uh, improv classes, and that's when I saw my path. I was like, I was like, you know, uh, later for this yeah. jazz. But then yeah, Lincoln Park in the 70s was much different than it was today. Yeah, no good doubt. Italian ice on Armitage, though. There was always good Italian ice. Oh, man, that was great. You know, she was like, I used to call her, she was like the, the soup Nazi before the soup Nazi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she, right, you know, we're going to, before I let you go, you know, you wrote this great thing about Michael McCarthy. Michael yeah. McCarthy just passed away this last week, and he was um, a really thoughtful and uh, a really great guy to to be friends with and we all knew him and we all uh, respected him and were saddened by his passing. You wrote about your time with him in one particular instance where you went to the Grand Canyon when you guys were on Second City Tour and I thought maybe you could tell us about it. Well yeah it was the, like it was the, like in 19 uh, was it 93 I was like 36 and Mike was 33 and uh, and uh, he had just finished his work on the main stage and he was going out to California and I had left Second City and he, he you know asked me if I wanted to go and I was like yeah man he's like hey maybe we should stop up the Grand Canyon before we go I'm like yes <laughs> let's do that so we were, <laughs> we were driving across and and uh, we finally get to the Grand Canyon and uh, we, I, I might as well have been looking at a postcard because I'm like you know it was so effing grand I couldn't take it all in and so uh, Mike says to me, you want to walk to the bottom? And I was like, are you crazy? Do you want to walk to the bottom? I used to be read meters. I, I can walk all day long. And <laughs> I used to tour with Michael before at you know, the touring company. I never seen Michael do anything physical other than after we do the show, he'd be at the bar and at the time he smoked. He didn't, you know, but at the time he smoked, I was like, you know, he, all he did was smoke. I never saw Michael doing anything remotely physical. So he was like, yeah. So I went to the gift shop and I bought music to listen to the Grand Canyon by cassette tape. And, uh, and Michael had a red little ghetto blaster, which became a chore. So I popped it in. So we're walking down and I'm telling you, man, if you ever decide to go to the Grand Canyon, rent the fuck mules, rent the mules, <laughs> donkeys, rent them. Do not walk down. That is like, and I was like, like I say, 36 at the time. That was the most intense walk coming out that I ever had. I felt my mu muscles in my ass days afterward. Rent the wow. mule. And plus, there were animals. I didn't put this part in it. There was like a mountain goat. And I came across it. He's looking at me like, 
you go first. And I'm like, no, <laughs> you go ahead. He was like, hey, man, we can do this all day, OK? I ain't got nowhere to go. So I'm scared as a pacifist sucker. So then we get down to the bottom. And it took like three and a half hours to walk to the bottom. And uh, we met this German girl. And she says, uh, well, she's pretty and everything. She's like, hey, have you guys seen the Colorado River? I'm like, no, no. She's like, oh, well, you you better um, you better leave now because once it gets dark, you can't see the trail. You know? <laughs> and oh, so, uh, so, but before that happened, as I was going down, there was a group of German hikers in the canyon. And I got tired of listening to this music to listen to the Grand Canyon by, you know, they had like this National Geographic PBS right. style music. And so I take out my music to listen to the Grand Canyon by and pop in Michael Jackson's Don't Stop Till You Get Enough, you know. And admittedly, <laughs> A different I should time. have had <laughs> headphones. But like I said, you know, I'd never Grand Canyon before. And, and I'm playing, you know, Don't Stop Till You Get Enough. That's a jam, man. That is hot. So uh, all of a sudden, these uh, one of the German hikers is like, hey, black man, black man, black, turn off the music, music, music. And before I get time to say, is, is he talking to me? Michael, whole body shakes and vibrates, blow me, blow me. <laughs> this is in the Grand Canyon. It, it was so funny, because you know how Michael was. He's no, it's not, it doesn't seem like something human beings. Do. Yeah. Kind, soft, thoughtful man. If everybody was like Michael, it'd be a beautiful. Boy. You know, it's like it's like Goldstein. You know, I don't think of I don't think of you I don't think of you guys as white guys. I just think you're a human being first. And Michael's like a <laughs> thank you. Beautiful thank you very human much. Being, you know. Well, you can check it out. Check out all of Greg's story. It's great about the way up and everything as well. Greg Holloman is uh uh of course played Principal Blackman on Strangers with Candy. He's in Florida, sheltering in place. Our guest oh, today on the talk show. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Hey, Greg, thanks so much for joining us, man. We have